Good evening. Good evening. Great job on making yourself heard out there. We're glad you're here, and we're thankful for all of our visitors who have made it out tonight to be a part of our service. It is great to have Brother J.R. Eaton with us again tonight, and he'll come in just a little bit and share another word with us from the book of Jonah. And uh, we are going to be taking up an offering here in a little while, and all of the offering that we receive this week will go toward our revival expenses, so we'll let you, I wanted to let you know that up front as well. Let's pray, and we'll get started with our worship service. Lord, we come to you now. We do thank you once again for your presence in our midst. Lord, we're thankful for your love and your mercy and your grace. Lord, we're thankful that your word still speaks to us because you are alive and your word is active and alive. And Lord, we pray that you would just use Brother J.R. once again, just speak through him the words that are needed, that our hearts will be revived. And if there's someone here who does not know you as Savior and Lord of their life, they will surrender all to you before they leave this place tonight. And we pray all these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, sometimes you make some plans, and sometimes those plans get changed. Mike and I will be bringing our call to worship and special music tonight, so y'all pray for us. We have not practiced at all, so we'll, we'll see how this goes.
invite you to join us as we continue our singing tonight. We're going to sing Revive Us again, and we're going to sing all four verses of Revive Us Again. <laughs> We praise Thee, O God. has been working on a special for, I think, several, I say several months now. <laughs> we started working on this way back in May, and uh, we're going to try to sing this for you tonight. Um, the words will be displayed if you 
want to sing along with us, feel free to do so. It will be just fine. And uh, hopefully um, we'll be able to do uh, this song justice because y'all the words to this song. It's absolutely amazing.
mic a minute here to make sure they're set up and ready to go and bring the special music. And after the special music, Brother JR, we want you to come once again and just share with us what the Lord has laid upon your heart. We do want to thank all of our visitors once again for being here, several, several of our pastors from Chickasaw County here tonight and some of their church members with them. We're thankful for them being here. Brother Gary, our director of missions, AMD, whatever initials they want to give him at this point. Uh, he's here with us tonight. We're glad he's here and our home folks, we're glad you're here as well. And we're praying that the Lord will move in our midst once again tonight and speak through Brother J.R. and the message. So J.R., you just come once the special music is over with and share with us what the Lord's laid upon your heart. We do want to thank those who provided the meal for us again tonight. J.R. is going to have to preach through. Uh, he's got to try to stay awake tonight and keep everybody else awake at 8 as well. And we're thankful for those who have volunteered to feed us tomorrow night, youth night, Wednesday night. I forgot to mention that last night, so I'll mention that now. And uh, Miss Melinda.
Amen. Thank you so much for leading us tonight. And if that was with no practice, I'd hate to see it with practice because that was perfect tonight. Let's give them a hand. Wonderful, wonderful job tonight. Really enjoyed that. Thank you so much for the meal again tonight. It was wonderful. I kind of feel like my favorite episode of Andy Griffith. Anybody remember that show when TV was actually good? Anybody remember that? Well, you might remember that on one episode, Aunt B had to be out of town. And everybody was worried that Andy was going to get hungry. So you might remember that people started making spaghetti. And they would invite him over. So he had to go to one house and eat. And then he had to go to another house and eat. And he, all through the episode, the people were worried about him. So they kept feeding him. And finally, I love the, the last part of the episode. Somebody else calls after he is so full and he's about to pop. And he says, well, i got to go again and eat again. I kind of feel like that. Because we had a plan this morning. We ate really, really good last night. We ate really, really good tonight. So I told my wife, I said, the plan is what I'm going to do is I'm going to eat a big breakfast. And then I'm not going to eat again until we get to Hulk of tonight. Well, that was the plan. I think you said a while ago, plans can change. You're saying, say, we well, can't do that. And this was after I had already ate a huge breakfast. She said, my grandmother just called. And she's got black eyed peas. And she's got cornbread. And she's got fried chicken, and we're supposed to go eat with her. So I went and ate with her, and then I went and ate again. So uh, I want to know one thing. I want to tell you one thing. I have definitely been fed this week, that's for sure. And I hope that you'll be fed, not from me, but I hope that you'll be fed by what the Word of God has to say to us tonight. Amen. Uh, I told Brother David, I said, Brother David, I'm nervous. I looked out here, and we got about 100 preachers here tonight. So um, his advice was, well, just preach to them. So I guess I'll try to do that then. But uh, I'm so glad to see so many preachers out here tonight. Uh, Brother Bobby, had not seen Brother Bobby in such a long time. And uh, we talked about last night uh, people that gave me a start. And Brother Bobby was one of those that gave me a start. And he allowed me to come and preach and do revivals and brotherhoods and uh Brother Bobby, I want you to know I'll always be grateful for you, for your investment. Thank you so much. Uh, Brother Randy is back there. And um, I have to say that I used to be, I used to be my dad's favorite preacher. But since Brother Randy came along, I'm kind of down just a little bit. And I'm fine with that. I am fine with that. I appreciate Brother Randy so much. And uh, he actually came and he did our revival at First Baptist Abbeville. And uh, the only complaint that they had about Brother Randy, they didn't have a complaint. And uh, the only complaint was, you only got him for one night. You should have got him for all of the services. And I said, well, we'll do that better next time. So he did an amazing job. And uh, Brother Randy, so good to see you tonight. Uh, Brother Gary, good to see you. Some weeks ago, Brother Gary contacted me through Facebook. And he sent me a message. And he said, look, you know, you don't know me and I don't know you. But I see that you're in the ministry. And I'm just reaching out. And, uh, brother, I just want to know, is there any way that I can pray for you? And, uh, Gary, I appreciate that so much, Brother Gary, for doing that and uh, checking in on me. You know, it's a special thing to just reach out to people and ask, how can I pray for you? And he's a very special guy. Uh, Brian, good to see you, Brother Brian, tonight. Uh, when I was at Mount Comfort, his mom and dad were just like my mom and dad, and I miss them. and just appreciate his mom and dad so much and appreciate him. And uh, so glad to have family here tonight, cousins here tonight, and, uh, Glad to have First Holka here tonight, too. So just a lot, a lot of support, a lot of special, special people here tonight. So glad to see you. If you would, I want you to take your copy of God's Word, and I want you to turn tonight to Jonah chapter 2. Jonah chapter 2. And our time together, what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of briefly overview and work our way through the book of Jonah. You might remember that last night we talked about running in the wrong direction. And that's exactly what Jonah was doing. He was running in the wrong direction. And we talked about how would we know if maybe we were running in the wrong direction. Well, there's some telltale signs for that. One of the ways that we know that we might be running in the wrong direction is when we completely just don't pay attention to the Word of God. And that's what Jonah did. When we resist the word of God, we're running in the wrong direction. Not only did he do that, but he completely, when it came to the will of God, he rejected the will of God. 
And I want to tell you, when you resist the word of God and when you reject the will of God, you're running in the wrong direction. And then we also talked about how it really came down to this. Yes, he rejected the word of God. And yes, he completely resisted the will of God. But you know, deep down, Jonah resented the way of God. Of all the things that God is going to do, if these evil Ninevites, and somebody told me at supper, he said, make sure you bring up that, that unique bowling team that they had. And they did have a unique bowling team. You remember what we talked about last night? How that they were so evil that once they would capture somebody and once they would kill them, they would literally cut their heads off and play ball with their heads. I mean, it's pretty twisted, right? And God, if they would just turn to him, God is going to show grace. And God is going to forgive them. Yeah. And Jonah just had a big problem with that. Because Jonah didn't want that. Jonah wanted God to get them. But when you look at the book of Jonah, what stands out is the grace of God that goes deeper than any of us understand. And that's what he wanted to do. So, he resisted the word of God. He rejected the will of God. He resented the way of God. So he found himself right in the middle of the discipline of God. And that's what we're going to pick up tonight. Jonah chapter 2. And I want to read the whole chapter. Would ask if you are able, would you rise in reverence at this time? Jonah chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I and thou heardest my voice. For thou hadst cast me into the deep, into the midst of the seas and the floods compassed me about all thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters compassed me about even to the soul. The depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars were about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came in unto thee, unto thine holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Let's pray together. Lord, as we come to you tonight, Lord, I do ask that you would speak to hearts. Lord, I pray that you would move throughout this message. Lord, if there are changes that need to be made, Lord, if we are just almost at the verge of having a personal revival, but maybe we refuse to let go of something, maybe we refuse to be all in, maybe we refuse to let revival, first of all, happen in our own lives, I pray, Lord, that we would make the step necessary to have revival. I pray, Lord, that we would let things go. I pray that we would allow you to have your will and your way throughout this service. And Lord, I just thank you so much. Lord, please speak to us tonight. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The book of Jonah is about running. Last night, what was Jonah doing? He was running from God. Tonight in Jonah chapter 2, we see him as he is running to God. Now let me say tonight, I don't know what you've been going through. I don't know what you've been through in your life. 
I don't know what you've been going through in the last few weeks. But there may be somebody here tonight that doesn't need to run from God. But somebody here tonight that needs to run to Him. There may be someone here tonight that needs to lay something at this altar. There may be someone here tonight that's going through a problem or a worry or a stress or a pressure or an anxiety that they need to turn over to God tonight. And I hope before you leave this place that you'll do just that. Amen. The question to ask you is, why should I? Why should I run to God? You know, sometimes we like to think that we're in control. Sometimes we like to think that we can handle about anything that life throws at us. Well, I want to give you three reasons tonight of why we should do what Jonah did. I want to give you three reasons tonight of why we should run to God. First of all, let me say to you that we should run to God because only God can deliver us. He's it. You know, in life, you have people that can talk to you. You have people that can counsel you and give you advice. You have people that can encourage you and you have people that can help you. It's amazing that people can do a lot of things. But ladies and gentlemen, only God can do everything. Amen. So as we look at this tonight... Oh, we want to help and we want to encourage and we're so thankful for people who've made a difference in our life. But only God can do everything. Only God can deliver us. I believe that Jonah came to that reality. When he was there in the fish's belly, I believe Jonah knew it was going to take somebody else to help him. I believe that Jonah knew the Coast Guard couldn't help him. I believe that Jonah knew that the only way he could be helped and the only way that he could be delivered is through God. Amen. And nothing has changed. Oh, I want to tell you tonight, you may be here and you might feel like you're in a fish's belly. But I want you to know that God can deliver you. You may be here tonight. And you may feel like you're walking through a fiery furnace. God can deliver you. You may be here tonight and you may be like Joseph. You might feel like you've been thrown in a pit and forgotten about. God can deliver you. You may be here tonight and you might be like the disciples. You're in the midst of a storm. God can deliver you. You may be here tonight and you may be like David and trouble all around you. God can deliver you. You may be here tonight and you might be like Job. Life just kind of seems like a puzzle right now and the pieces just don't fit. God God can deliver you. You may be here tonight and you may be struggling. God can deliver you. You may be here tonight and you may be worrying. God can deliver you. You may be here tonight and you may feel like you've hit rock bottom. God can deliver you. Amen. We see that in Jonah. So what does Jonah do? He cries out. And I want to encourage you tonight. Maybe you kind of feel like Jonah. Don't just think about God. Don't just ponder God. Don't put off. Maybe tonight you need to run to God. Amen. Only God can deliver us. Number two. Why would I want to run to God? Because God still answers prayers. God still answers prayers. Look at verse 1 with me in chapter 2. Then Jonah prayed. Everybody see that? Then Jonah prayed. It was probably a good time to pray, don't you think? <laughs> He's in the belly of a fish that God has prepared. Now I find this very ironic. You do realize everybody's doing what they're supposed to do except Jonah. Right? Right? The fish did what he was supposed to do. Let me go ahead and give you a spoiler alert. Nineveh is going to do what they're supposed to do. The only one that's not doing what they're supposed to do is Jonah. So what does he do? Well, he prays. 
And here's what's remarkable to me. I know when we look at the book of Jonah, sometimes we are just caught up on the fact that God wants to extend grace to the Ninevites. And I think when we look at Jonah, we think it's only about that. God is just extending grace to them. When you look at chapter 2, I think it's obvious that God is extending grace to Jonah. What is that? To Jonah. Even though Jonah has been disobedient, even though Jonah has been sinful, even though Jonah has been rebellious, guess what? Jonah was still God's child. That's right. You know, we fail and we mess up and we strike out. But isn't it great to know that if there's ever been a time where you've come to Christ and you've trusted Jesus to do for you what you could never do for yourself that we're still His child and we can still come to Him. I'm not promoting sin. Sin is serious. It is so serious that it sent Jesus to the cross. That's how serious it is. But what I am saying is when we fail, sometimes I think we might be scared to come to God and talk to Him. Listen, if you know Jesus as your Savior, even if you fail, you are still God's child. Amen. And you can still run to Him. Oh, Jonah ought to be an encouragement for us because here's a guy that messed up. Here's a guy that had a bad attitude and a bad outlook. Here's a guy that didn't want to do what God wanted him to do. We talked about last night about how he did everything he could to get far away from the will of God. But when Jonah cried out, guess what? God heard him. And when we cry out, God hears us. We should consider ourselves very blessed people that we have a God that is so close that we can call upon Him in prayer. So as we look at this, why should I run to God? Well, because only God can deliver us. Why should I run to God? Because He still answers prayers. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. Have you seen Him move in your life? Amen. Have you seen Him do things you can't explain? Have you seen Him make a way when there was no way? Amen. Have you seen His mercy? Have you seen His grace? Have you seen Him come through? Have you seen Him provide? Have you seen Him bless you? He does that. I don't know about you, but I don't want to run from him. I want to run to him. Right. Final thing, and we're done. Why should we run to God? Because God still saves. God still saves. I want you to look back at verse 9. Chapter 2, verse 9. One of my favorite preachers is H.B. Charles. When H.B. Charles looked at this verse, he said, this really sums up the entire Bible. And I agree with him. Look at chapter 2, verse 9. We're almost done. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Catch this. Salvation. You see it? Salvation is of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Aren't you proud of that tonight? Amen. Aren't you glad that salvation is not of us? You know, as we think about that, the Bible says in Ephesians that we are saved by grace through faith. Amen. 
He goes on to talk about not by works, lest any man boast. Do you know if you could save yourself, you'd brag on yourself? I would. If you could save yourself, you'd brag on yourself. If you could save yourself, you would talk about how good and how capable you are. But friends, isn't it great to know that we can't save ourselves? We may have never been in the belly of a fish, but I want to tell you something. We were dead, we were doomed, we were disobedient, we were on our way to a devil's hell, but Christ has saved us. Salvation is of the Lord. Listen to me. You'll never, ever, 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 ever be saved apart from Jesus Christ. Some people believe that when they die, that hopefully all the good things they've done will outweigh all the bad things they've done. It's never going to happen. The best day that you've ever lived is like filthy rags compared to the righteousness of Christ. Jonah could say, and I want to tell you right there, in that stinking belly of the fish, Jonah has some solid theology, doesn't he? He says, you know, salvation, that's completely up the Lord. Amen. Now, when we think about that, in the Hebrew here, that word salvation means victory. It means to be delivered. It means to be helped. It means prosperity. Now, here's what I want to share with you tonight. I don't know if you've ever had this problem, but I have. I know that my eternal salvation is secure. I know that Jesus has saved me. And I am trusting him and him alone for my salvation. I know that my eternal salvation is secure. But there have been times in my life where things happen. And I get tore down and worked up and stressed out. Anybody else ever been there? Now don't look at me spiritual. Come on, anybody else ever been there? And as I think about that, I have to ask myself a question. If I can trust Jesus for my eternal situation, wouldn't that mean that I can also trust him for my everyday situation? I'm just saying, as we look at this sometimes, I think we forget. Yes, I know I'm saved. I know I'm going to heaven. But I'm not going to be able to pay this bill. What's going to happen if the plant closes? What's going to happen if this don't work out? I'm going to go to pieces. Listen, if we can trust him for our eternal salvation, we can trust him in our everyday situation. Because salvation belongs to the Lord. Brother Hatcher. Thank you for that, Brother J.R. Miss Melinda is going to get in place there. I'm going to ask you to stand for our hymn of invitation. If the Lord has been dealing with you, you come. The altar is open if you need to pray. I'll be here if you need someone to pray with you. Miss Melinda. I have decided to go Jesus. I have decided to go Jesus. I have decided to go Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. No, not going. 
heart for that message tonight. Thank you for being here. Hope you have listened to that message. And if the Holy Spirit is still dealing with you, you do not have to leave this place until you have everything right with him. There are, I'll be around for a little while after it's over with, but they all will be here. There's some other preachers that will still be talking if you need to grab one of them. Do not leave this place until you're right with him. I do want to thank all of the other pastors and visitors that are here with us tonight. But if I'm brought you this message tonight, please, sir. Lord, we do want to come to you tonight, God, and we just want to thank and praise the Lord for them and God that you are. Lord, we do want to lift up those JRC, Lord, and we just thank you, God, for the message that you give us through him, Lord, and just continue to bless him. Lord, we know the other child of doubt that anything we've got going on that we need help with, that you will in them. Lord, we like to have you guys at the best of us, church, and Lord, send them to your Bible. 